Good evening, guys. Welcome back. This is week four. Uh, this is the last uh, session of the class. Uh, we're nearing the end, and I think you guys are doing really well. Uh, I've gotten uh, through well over half of the presentations that we, I received last night. Uh, if I haven't got to yours uh, today, then I will certainly get to yours tomorrow. Uh, it, it takes me a while because I, I spend a little time with each one. But uh, I've been liking what I've seen. Uh, the presentations are really good this week, uh, this month. And I hope you guys are going to uh, post them for your classmates. This entire week is dedicated to the notion of feedback. I'm giving you feedback on what I think about your presentation. And you get to evaluate my feedback and, and uh, determine what you would like to change. Now, you're obligated to change and improve your presentation. You are not absolutely obligated to do everything that I say. You simply have to consider it. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna learn a lot about how to deal with and use feedback to its best advantage this week. That's what the entire week is dedicated towards. So uh, there are lots of ways to get feedback. I know most of you, uh, as you're working on your presentation, you have your own sort of punch list of things that you'd like to change or do better. And now that you have a little more time, maybe you can come back and, and do it. Maybe you. You, you, you uh, had so many slides, but you maybe wanted to add a few more images. Now you have a chance to do so. And uh, one of the great opportunities you have is that we've left last week's uh, discussion board 3.3 open. And so last week you were posting in progress. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you'd like feedback, you can go back in there now. It's still open. And you can post the project that you turned in last night for your classmates. Now, this is entirely voluntary. You don't have to do this. But if you'd like to receive additional feedback, you can post your project and ask your classmates to give you feedback. And, uh, of course, if you do this, uh, if you receive this service from them, then you should re uh, reciprocate and you should give feedback back to others. Uh, that's the only way this really works. It's all voluntary. I can't guarantee that if you post your uh, project in the discussion board that someone will give you feedback. It's it's just up to uh, how, how your classmates work together. But uh, that's why we're trying to present this whole sense of camaraderie and help making each other better. And so this week we are dealing with the notion of not only receiving feedback, but giving feedback. We have an assignment dedicated to giving feedback. Uh, and I'm going to give you some rules for giving and receiving feedback as well. We have a little bit of reading left. We're almost done with the reading. We have last chapter of Resonate. And that last chapter, uh, uh, appropriately enough, deals with the notion of feedback. So uh, as you guys move on from this class, I hope that you take the wisdom of Nancy Duarte with you. I hope that you have an understanding of what makes for good presentations that you can use what you can use presentations for. Uh, I hope you don't think of this as an arbitrary exercise. This was all meant to sharpen your communication and storytelling skills. These are things you're going to use for the rest of your career. Uh, and uh, there's no set way to make a presentation. I hope that you're going to look at what your classmates have done. You look at all the wild and, and uh, variety of examples that are out there and know that uh, there isn't just a single way to do a presentation. And maybe uh, as you have uh, opportunities in the future to, to do them yourselves, you have uh, examples of things that your classmates have done that have uh, excited you that you can now appropriate and start to make use of some of the tools, some of the software, some of the techniques, some of the storytelling um, structures that they used, and you can start to incorporate them yourselves and, and, and make your own uh, presentation skills better. That's what this is all about. It's just the start of a journey. This isn't the last presentation you're going to make. It's the it's just the, uh, the very first one that you're going to start implementing, uh, uh, incrementally improving on. And so Nancy Duarte wants you to take these uh, knowledge and go out and change the world. She wants you to spread your ideas. She wants you to talk to people and have an impact on them. She wants you not to 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 bore them with your uh, long uh, sonorous voice, but she wants you to excite them with your storytelling skills. 
And that's the way we're going to communicate. That's what we were going to get our messages across. And that's what this has all been about. Um, another part of this project has been selling yourself, has been about taking what are your advantages and skills and putting them to the fore so that people have uh, an opportunity to see the value in you. And uh, we talk about this a lot as personal branding, that we ourselves as creative individuals that have our skills out and available to the world are like individual corporations in which we offer a service and we offer a brand, a promise that we stand for something. And so um, you're going to hear a lot about personal branding as you go through Full Sail here. It's just the beginning month here. You've got a long way to go to finish. But as you're going from class to class, you're learning about professionalism. You're learning about the skills that's needed to be in the workplace. And personal branding is about managing and uh, assisting your reputation. It's about learning to know what is um, the saleable part of you and how you can put it forward and how to protect your reputation and how to, to manage uh, your digital footprint as it goes around the world off and out without you around to protect or explain it. So personal branding is about figuring out the face, the digital face that you put to the world and how you can shape it and how you can protect it. And uh, we look at uh, how corporations work and how branding in general works to see how we can help ourselves do that uh, with our skills. And the, the first rule about personal branding is to be transparent. You cannot uh, make this all up or be smoke and mirrors. You, you can always fake a resume, but somebody is going to see through it. And if you try to treat your, your personal brand the same way, uh, at some point there's going to be holes poked into it. So managing your brand is about setting yourself up so that you don't have to keep remembering whether or not you told X, Y, and Z one thing and, and uh, K, G, G, and X something else. Uh, it's about being able to have the same story and being transparent. So being honest about what your skills are uh, is very important. I know when uh, young people go out into the world to get their first job uh, and, and you're asked about something, uh, you, you tend to want to say whatever you need to say to get that job. So if someone asks if you know a particular piece of software or if you've done something uh, that you haven't done, it's easy to say yes, thinking that, uh, you know, uh, if someone asks if you know how to, how to program in Maya, that you can just go home that night and watch a few YouTube videos and get caught up. But if you aren't honest about what you can and cannot do, it's going to catch up with you. And uh, as terms of managing your brand, it's very much uh, in your, your advantage to be fully transparent about that. Uh, you know, if you have a skill that you don't, if there's a skill that you don't have, but you feel like you can pick it up, it's better to say it in that regard than to uh, try to put something over on a client or a, uh, an employer. Be unique. This is the most important part about figuring out your personal brand. Um, you're going to go uh, into training with lots of other students that are studying the same material that you, you're studying. So while it's important that you graduate and you have a full sale degree, that degree by itself does not guarantee you the job. You're not only competing with people around the world, you're competing with your fellow students. So in order to be able to uh, maximize your value, what you need to do is that as you start to get deeper and deeper into your principal subject, you're going to find some things that you do really well better than others. And it may not be the thing that you think of right now. If you're studying audio production, you may find that you're better at compression than anybody else. And that's not something you would think of as a career, but it becomes the thing that can be your value. If you're an audio, uh, if you're a, um, an animator, uh, there may be some aspect of, of rigging that you're good at that other people can't do. That becomes your unique skill that you can put forward. So what you want to do as you're going through school, 
is pay attention to not only learning everything that you need to learn, but figuring out which things you excel at, which you rise to the top at, and which you can put forth as your unique talent that uh, might be your edge in gaining a job or uh, uh, some kind of a space in the marketplace. And finally, don't compromise. Uh, when people get started out uh, in the, uh, their careers, they often cut their price or agree to work for uh, um, on, on something that they shouldn't, and it's hard to get out of that. And I know it's very, very difficult to say no at an early stage, but uh, it's important to do so in order to preserve yourself for the long run. If you don't compromise in the beginning, then you can make uh, um, you. Uh, you, you can get you can receive the value that you uh, deserve in the long run. I actually know a lot of students who end up moving from one city to another because uh, they've cut their freelance rate for everyone and they can't get the price that they deserve. So they now have to go to another city so that uh, they can uh, state a new price. So if, if you stand for what you want at the beginning, you don't have to end up uh, worrying about those kinds of things. So these are the kinds of things that um, you worry about in, in in protecting your brand and making sure that your brand is taken care of. And another way of thinking about your brand is to look at major corporations and see what they do. Every corporation that's out there that forms a brand has entire departments, lots of people dedicated to putting forth uh, their message and their brand becomes a brand promise. It's a pact that they make to their audience, to their customers. And so uh, I want you to think about what is the brand promise that you might offer from your skills. If you look at major corporations, uh, they stand for something. Um, and uh, it's, it's valuable to look at, at uh, a really well-respected ones. So I think one highly respected one is Amazon. Amazon's been in business for over 20 years. They're an online retailer. They began selling books, and then they started adding clothing and other things, and now they just sell so many things, I, I don't know what all they do and they don't sell. Uh, you know, I, I'm hard-pressed to say what you could or couldn't buy on Amazon. You might be able to buy a jet or a bulldozer or a dynamite. I don't know. Uh, there, I'm sure there's a limit to what they sell, but they have this uh, wide ranging um, inventory where they want to be your go to place for anything that you might want to buy. Now, is that their brand promise that they have everything? No, uh, they don't. They don't implicitly promise that they have everything. And I'm sure we can find stuff that they they don't sell. Are they the lowest price? Not necessarily. I'm sure they have great prices. I'm sure that they have so much power in the marketplace that for the most part, they're the cheapest. But if it, it on a case by case basis, I bet you could find things that are on sale somewhere else that, that would beat the Amazon price. Amazon's brand promise is not to be the cheapest or the widest or the best. It's to give you the best service. Amazon has devoted itself to making it easy for you to buy online. They pioneered a lot of things like uh, one-click sales uh, that you didn't have to re-enter your, your credentials and your, your, your uh, financial information to buy something, that they give you free shipping. First, they were offering two-day free shipping, and now it's one-day free shipping. And uh, there are areas now where you can buy something and get it the same day. Uh, they've taken all of their profits and, and, and uh, invested them into having more and more uh, warehouses that are closer to where you live, which cuts down on the transportation time. And why did they do this? To give you better and better service. The whole point of Amazon is to make it simple and easy and convenient for you to buy. So convenient that in fact, you don't consider buying from anywhere else. And so the brand promise from Amazon is not that they're gonna be the cheapest or that they'll absolutely have everything but that they're going to make it the easiest, best experience from uh, any other place that you might want to buy. And they're uh, absolutely dedicated and fanatically focused on creating that ease of use. 
They've done things like adding uh, customer reviews that you can rely on and uh, having um, uh, serial purchases. And, and uh, they, uh, they have Amazon Prime, which offers free shipping. So they've come up with a number of ways to help their customers uh, make the buying experience easier. And that's what they're all about. And Amazon isn't a perfect company. And in fact, you know, uh, we're starting to look into their labor prices because they have so many warehouses and they, they ship so much that, uh, you know, they're starting to have uh, a worker force that, that is uh, under pressure there. Uh, and so we worry about them as a, a corporate uh, citizen. But as a supplier to us, as a, as a retail um, web store, they are unparalleled. They give us the best service. That's the brand promise, and they live up to it every day. And they are dedicated to that system at all, completely. And uh, times when they're overwhelmed, like everyone uses them during the Christmas season, uh, there's so many orders going out that things get uh, messed up quite a bit. And I don't know if you've ever had an order that, that you ordered something for Christmas and got messed up. But you'll find that uh, they... Uh, they make good on everything. They don't. They don't argue about giving people their money back or reshipping something that you said didn't arrive. They just give you customer service. And in times when they they know they're overwhelmed, they're going to go out of their way to be on your side. So that's what they're all about: making sure the customers are happy with them. And in doing so, they've made a ton of money. So uh, certainly, it works for them. Their brand promise is we're going to make it easy for you to shop. And they care about making sure that you uh, think well of them and you realize that they have kept that promise. Now, what are some corporations that don't care about whether you uh, um, think too well of them? Well, one of the worst corporations uh, with our, uh, one of the corporations with the worst reputations in the United States is Comcast. They're a uh, cable company. They sell cable TV service. And cable TV uh, is started out as monopolies in different areas. Uh, when cable first began, uh, a cable company would come and bid on the rights to a city uh, before they would start to put in all their lines and things. And so the city was guaranteeing them a monopoly. And then eventually, once cable covered the United States, we hoped for competition. But... Uh, these cable corporations had carved up the country so much that they uh, preserved these uh, monopolies in lots of places. And this is exactly what Comcast is uh, most known for. They do not like or go into competition. And in doing so, they've created a sort of contempt for their customer. If you call customer service for Comcast, you will get lost. They have intentionally made it difficult for you to get through to a live person because they do not want to pay for customer service. So Comcast has a reputation that they actually actively maintain of being uh, an unliked company. Uh, and they find that uh, it's profitable for them because their customers typically don't have any other choice. Whenever they go into an area where they do have competition, when uh there's another service that they have to compete against. Comcast has actually invented another name for themselves. Uh, if you ever heard of the term in Xfinity, Xfinity is a sub-brand of Comcast that they use in areas where they have to compete against other cable companies like AT&T and Verizon because Comcast is so poorly thought of that they can't promote themselves as Comcast. So... Um, you can't rely on tricks like monopoly control uh, if you want the cus customer to uh, like you or um, think well of you. And when things go wrong, when things are uh, um, when things happen, uh, you want to be able to react to them. A uh, a great brand that has had some trouble that they reacted really well to is Samsung. A couple of years ago, Samsung put out a cell phone, and it had uh, a couple of uh, instances in the first couple of weeks of being on sale that the cell phone caught on fire or exploded, 
uh, in their customers' hands. And no one quite knew what was going on, not even Samsung. But within the first two weeks, there were reports in the news that uh, five or six of these phones had had this happen. And Samsung, uh, without even knowing that it was their fault, immediately called all of their phones off the market at a cost of themselves of billions of dollars. And within two weeks, they had discovered that it was, in fact, their own fault, that they had designed a phone which had a, a, a battery charging system that was running too close to some other circuits. So the battery recharging tended to catch other circuits on fire, and that was the explosion. And it was a design flaw that they created. And so they pulled all those phones off the market and uh, replaced uh, um, the phones for all the customers at a great loss to themselves in that quarter. But by reacting so quickly, and the cell phone business moves very fast, within another uh, three or four months, they had a brand new phone out for sale, and it did not have any problems. And their sales came back because people could see that Samsung was a company that cared about their customers, that cared about being responsible for making their mistakes. And that's the one thing that I want us to learn from uh, major corporations and about our own brand management. Uh, there are going to be times when we as uh, creative actors in the world are going to miss a deadline, are going to get the project wrong, we're going to misunderstand the client's brief and uh, not deliver the, 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 uh, the product that we were supposed to. And it's how you react to that. It's how you make good that matters, that shows your character. Uh, they say uh, um, every boxer gets punched, but it's whether you get off the mat uh, that tells your character. And so how you react to uh, bad, act, uh, bad fortune uh, shows off whether or not you're a brand that people can believe in or trust. And so we as individuals make brand promises. We make promises of the skills that we want to offer to each other. And if you want to create a brand promise, you have to understand that it has to be a certain kind of value. It must be credible. It must come from uh, an authentic place. It must be something that people want. It must have a value for people. Uh, and the most important thing about a brand promise is if you say, I'm going to be the best um, you know, concept artist there is, or I'm going to create the most uh, outlandish comedy then you have to keep that promise. You have to uh, uh, maintain the brand promise. Uh, do what you say you're going to do. And so um, that's what we want to learn from corporations as we market ourselves in the new world of uh, you know, independent um, agents. Uh, even when you're working for a corp company, uh, within that company, you're moving from level to level. You have a personal brand that you are... Um, uh, managing and, and promoting, and you want to uh, look to the way the world works to, to uh, promote that for yourself as well. So uh, that's what we wanted you to do in these presentations uh, in this final uh, form here. We want you to try to figure out what the brand promise you're making to your dream employer is going to be, to announce it, to explain it, to put it forward as best you can, and to make it a credible promise from an authentic place that you can uh, speak with hail about, with honesty, authenticity, integrity, and love. We want you to be able to use your voice to uh, elucidate your talents and get that to be understood by others. And if you can do that, then you're taking Nancy Duarte's uh, um, recommendations and making good use of them. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, and that's what we want you to think about as, you're taking, as you go on from this class and take uh, Nancy Duarte books with you. So again, this is the week in which we're going to have a chance to improve our projects you know, uh, oftentimes people get into these bad habits of being what we call 11th hour wonders. You're, you work straight to the deadline and, and you just get it done right at the end. 
And what happens when you get it done right at the end is you don't even have that chance to step back and review it. And uh, if you can work out a, a schedule for yourself in which you not only get your project done, but you get your project done with a chance for review and feedback, then you're going to take it to that next level that you're going to be able to uh, not only catch mistakes, but think about ways to make things better. And so feedback is all important in that aspect. You give yourself feedback, but you receive feedback from others. And the feedback you receive from others is very important because it is the stuff that you could never have thought of yourself. Uh, humans, you know, we all think in our own little frames and someone with a fresh vantage point can show you something that will uh, really change your perspective on your own work. So uh, here are the rules for how to give feedback. Uh, the first rule is called create safety. So that means you want to seek feedback in a venue in which you feel comfortable and protected. Well, that means I don't want you to go seeking feedback on your projects on Facebook or TikTok or uh, Reddit. You know, those are places where anonymous trolls say mean things just for fun, whether they mean it or not. So you're not going to have a great uh, time there. You're going to you're going to put yourself out and just have anonymous trolls sniping at you. So when we say create safety, we want you to seek advice on your project from people that you trust in an atmosphere that you can believe in. And so I believe that our discussion board uh, for the class has done that, that all of our classmates, our colleagues, that we have each other's back, that no one is trying to be mean to each other, and we're all trying to make each other better. When you go out into the working world, you will find that the workplace that you're in becomes that zone of safety as well. If you're all working for the same company, you can receive feedback from your colleagues, knowing that they want you to succeed because that helps them succeed. You're all working on the same team, on the same projects. So a zone of safety means that you feel like the people that are giving you advice have your best interests at heart. Create safety. Be positive. Now, this doesn't mean only say nice things. It means only talk about the things that can be changed or should be changed. There are certain aspects of a project that are like part of the, the brief, like uh, this particular assignment you had, I told you to be three to four minutes long. So if your project is four minutes long and someone says, oh, uh, you should, you should uh, make it four, five minutes longer, that's not part of what the assignment is. So talk about the things that can be changed. Uh, Oftentimes in feedback, people uh, don't necessarily understand the brief. So you're going to get feedback from, from other people that maybe isn't relevant. But you want to focus on the things that can and should be changed. And be specific. Now, these go hand in hand because uh, unless you give someone a change that's actually actionable, that it can be created, you're not doing them any good. For instance, if you show someone your slides and they say, I don't like your fonts, that's not helpful. I mean, it's an opinion, but there's nothing you can do about it. All you know is that someone doesn't like your fonts. You don't know how or why or how to change it. So when I say be specific, that feedback should be, I don't think your fonts work. They're too thin. Uh, you can't be read from a distance. So you should make a, you should pick a thicker font or you should choose a stronger color or you should have a different typeface. In that regard, someone's being specific enough that you can imagine making that change and you can probably run through it in your mind or even try a couple of variations. But someone has to give you specific enough feedback so that you know how uh, and, uh, and, and, and where to make the change. Be immediate. Now, I'm not uh, being a spoiler here by letting you know that uh, you guys are now and probably for the rest of your life on deadline. Any kind of creative art is working in a project-based system which has deadlines. And so 
these deadlines are important. And if someone comes to you and asks for feedback and you can't give it to them right then and there, you need to find out what their time frame is because there's nothing uh, more frustrating than receiving really good advice after the deadline for which it could have been uh, enacted. In our case, if you guys put your projects into the discussion board uh, today or tomorrow, uh, and they're up this week, and your classmates participate, they, in terms of giving feedback, uh, you should give feedback by Thursday or Friday. That way, people will still have the weekend to implement those changes. If you wait until Sunday night to give someone feedback, there's no way they're going to be able to have enough time to implement those changes. So find out what someone's deadlines are, be immediate, make sure that you're giving them feedback within the time frame for which they can meet their deadlines and they have positive use of your uh, information. And finally, provide tough love. If someone is completely off base, if they've missed the mark, you're not doing them a favor by ignoring it or uh, uh, just saying nothing. They're eventually gonna find out and it's better for them to find out from a friend it's better for them to find out early. It's better for them to find out from someone who's going to offer them uh, advice on the right track to get on. So uh, if someone has to hear that they're wrong, uh, there's a way to say it in which you're not hurting their feelings, but you're making sure that they're doing what they need to do. And that's what we call, that's what we mean by pro provide tough love. A good friend won't let someone hang out there uh, without knowing that uh, they're in the wrong direction. And so we all want to provide those services for each other. That's how to give feedback. Now, there's also rules for how to receive feedback. If you put your project up and you want people to give you advice, here are the rules. First one is cultivate a growth mindset. Now, what do I mean by that is that you have to respect everyone who's giving you uh, feedback and you have to give them a chance to fully air what they want to say. Now oftentimes people say they want feedback when really what they want are, are uh, compliments and they're very defensive and if someone starts to, to talk and mention something that uh, they're defensive about the person whose project uh, is being talked about will interject and, and, and uh, start to defend themselves. So if you mention that uh, you're, you're, you were watching the, the project and the audio was a little off and the person jumps in and says, oh yeah, but that's not my fault. The microphone screwed up, blah, blah, blah. That could be very true. There could be all kinds of reasons why whatever it is that you want to comment on is happening. But what also is happening is when you as the owner of a project jump in too soon and cut off someone who's giving you feedback, you will never get feedback from that person again. You're disrespecting them. You're telling them that you don't want to hear their whole opinion. Cultivating a growth mindset means be uh, the larger person. Let the, per let the people who are magnanimous enough to give you their opinion air their complete opinions. Now, this is how, let's talk about talking live. This isn't really going to happen in the discussion board because when someone gives you their opinion in the discussion board, they will complete their thought in the discussion in the in the text discussion. But in the real world, there's often times where you're asked people are asked for advice and they cut people off with uh, excuses about why something is. And uh, it may be important to know that information. And oftentimes, people. People say all these things. They, they tell you what's wrong with the project before they ever ask for your opinion. And that's not the proper way to ask for feedback either. You should just put up the project, let people say whatever they have to say. If they notice things that you're worried about, then you can commiserate with them. That's actually uh, number two. Take credit for your mistakes. It becomes a bonding moment. But don't don't shut down the feedback session by giving them all the feedback yourself. Make sure that you're letting them know that you really want to know what they have to say and let them air everything they have to say. Now, there may be information you need to tell them. You may need to tell them that the microphone was screwed up or the computer was got hung or something like that. You can do that after they've said 
everything they have to say. But you want to show people enough respect that when you ask their opinion, you let them fully air their views. Focus on self-improvement. Uh, now, again, people have all kinds of different points of view. So when they start to offer you feedback, they're going to talk about lots of things. Some of the things they're going to talk about aren't relevant to you. That's fine. That's just the nature of things. So your job as the person who receives the feedback is to pick through the feedback and find the feedback that is going to help you make your project better. That is the sort of advice that you're looking for. Maybe you'll get advice you hadn't thought of. Uh, certainly that's worth considering. But uh, if someone mentions something that doesn't matter, that's fine. Uh, thank them and then you don't have to do their feedback. Remember, part of your job as a person who receives feedback is to consider it all. You have a job to consider it, but you don't necessarily have to follow it all. Learn from criticism. Sometimes uh, there are just going to be people with different opinions that uh, you like red, they like blue. Uh, take it in as background information. Uh, it will help to form your worldview. You'll you'll, you'll uh, uh, learn that the world is a rainbow. But uh, criticism is important. Sometimes there's just not a way around it that people have different views on a particular subject or different uh, preferences. Uh, and that becomes information that you can um, uh, use for future knowledge. And finally, find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. We all want to make everybody better. And uh, uh, we're not in competition with our classmates or our teammates or our coworkers. We are all on the journey together and we want to make sure that everybody has success and we can celebrate that success. So we actually have an assignment that gives you uh, practice giving advice this week. It's called 4.3. It's presentation feedback assignment. And uh, it, in fact, is quite similar to uh, week one's TED Talk assignment. So if we look at this assignment, uh, you have to open the instructions. Uh, what we've got are three student films, uh, student projects that are at the uh, first draft phase. They're good. They're not perfect. They, they could be improved. There's some things that you could, you could look at and whatnot. So we have all three of them. They're on YouTube links. So you're not on this page. You actually have to open the instructions page. And when you open the instructions page, uh, you will find that they're on page two. And if we click on the link, you'll open um, a YouTube page. I don't know. Maybe my uh, web is not working too well. Let's try this link. YouTube page. YouTube's not happy. Well, uh, I assure you that they're there. Uh, if you have trouble finding these links, send me an email. I can, I can uh, post these links as a message or an announcement, uh, whatnot. But uh, these links are viewable on YouTube, I swear. Uh, I don't know why my web is messed up at this point. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, but I want you to watch all three of the student films. Again, they're, they're the same as the kind you guys have been turning in, uh, you know, three to four minutes long and so forth. And I want you to write me two paragraphs about that and some of the things you can think about as you're writing about it. What did you like? Uh, which part was difficult to follow? But I specifically want you to come up with some bits of advice for that student on how to make that project better. Should they add more slides? Should they change the audio? Should they redo the voiceover? Uh, what are the things that you think work well? What are the things that you think can be improved? And uh, I'm very annoyed that my uh, YouTube is not happening. Let's see if I can go straight to YouTube. Well, maybe YouTube is just down. Uh, but anyway, these links will take you to three different projects. I only want you to pick one. 
So you're not doing all three. You watch all three, pick one, and I want you to write me a short two paragraph piece on that uh, of that presentation. Tell me what you liked. Tell me what was difficult, uh, what didn't work. Tell me what uh, advice you would give the student. Uh, remember last week we talked about the three pillars of presentation. Tell me which of the three pillars they, that, this, that the uh, presentation appeals to. As you're watching it, does it appeal to ethos, pathos, logos? So just uh, some things we want you to ask and answer in your short write-up. And then finally, there's a third paragraph in which we want you to uh, talk about feedback. Uh, after the analysis, add a final paragraph reflecting upon your thoughts about feedback. How might this process inform your critique uh, and feedback process on your own work? So tell us what feedback can do for you, what you think about how, how you might use feedback in your own work. Um, so I'm, I'm going to maybe try to come back to that in a moment, but uh, that's project 4.3. It shouldn't take more than 15 minutes or 20 minutes of your time. Uh, you should do this as a text doc. You can actually turn it in uh, in the uh, instructions uh, 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 in, the, in the feedback format if you want. But uh, uh, basically just create a short doc. You don't have to add any uh, um, uh, visuals to it or anything like that. I just want two paragraphs talking about the student film that you chose. Give me advice. That's the most important thing. If there is no feedback advice in there, then you're, you're going to not get a, 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 the grade that you want. But uh, the other things are just telling me what you think about the film and, and, uh, and so forth. And then the other project this week is just turning in your final. So I want you to take the advice that you get from me, consider it, consider which of the advice you want to implement and which you don't. Uh, you're not obligated to invite to, to, uh, to uh, do everything I say. You're simply obligated to listen and consider the advice. If you've considered the advice, then uh, it's up to you to decide what should go in how or what should go into the final. But in the final version, we're looking for a couple of things. We're looking for it to be self-running. So if you worked in PowerPoint and you uh, had us click to engage the audio or click to go to the next slide and so forth, you need to turn that into a self-running version. The best way to make it self-running is to turn it into a movie. And certainly if you worked in Adobe Spark, then you can export it as an MPEG-4. That's a really easy way to turn it in. Uh, but even if you made it in PowerPoint, as long as it's a self-running PowerPoint file, that works fine. But even PowerPoint, you can export to video. And a really good thing about finalizing your work, uh, if, you're, if you've created it as a video, you might want to upload it to YouTube. There are a lot of advantages to, to uploading to YouTube. If you have a Google account, then you have uh, a YouTube account as well. You have YouTube storage space. So you can look at this as a way of backing up your work. If you have a finished movie as your project, you can put it on YouTube. And uh, if you don't want the world to see it, you can set it to private. But you can store it on Google's uh, servers instead of your own phone or, or, or computer. And therefore, if you have a computer crash or you lose your phone, you won't have lose, lost your work. You're permanently storing your work there. And uh, there's some great advantages to storing things on YouTube. For instance, if you find someone that you want to share your project with, you can instantly share it by sending the link. You don't have to send the entire big file. I know when you download the uh, the MPEG-4 from uh, Adobe Spark and and onto your system, it takes a while to download. Then when you download when you upload it back to FSO, that takes some time. Uh, if you had that big file on your computer or your phone, and every time you wanted to share it, you had to send someone three or four hundred megabytes, that would take a lot of time. But if you're storing it permanently on YouTube, uh, all you need to do is share that link. So that becomes really useful. Um, and then there's one other thing that we've implemented that we want you to do for the final version, and that is to give us what we call a changes list. Once you've decided what changes you're making from version one 
to version 2, I want you to write them down. Now you can put them on a short text file and upload it along with the final project, or you can put it simply into the message box. Uh, when you upload your final project, you can just come down to the feedback box and make a short list of the things that you changed, the changes that you list. We tend to call it a changes list. This is something that's very common in uh, uh, the working world. So uh, basically, tell us what things you added or changed or subtracted or or uh, uh, transformed in, from the from the first version to the second version. Uh, that's helpful for us in grading. It also makes makes us uh, know that you were clear on what you were doing. So I want the changes list along with the final version of your project. Now the project is due at Sunday night, midnight. Anybody that needs extra time, all you need to do is get a hold of me beforehand and I'll give you an extension. We can give you a little bit extra time going into the next week if you want more time to complete it. But uh, anything that's going on into next week is stealing from your next class. Because the way things work at Full Sail, class, this class is going to end Sunday at midnight. And on Monday morning, 12.01, your next class opens up. And you will access that from uh, um, Full Sail 1. The same place where you logged in to this class the first time. Next Monday night, when you go there, uh, or Monday morning, when you go there, uh, you'll see a link to the brand new class. For most of you, the next class is going to be PYP, Psychology of Play. It's a really cool class that looks at psychological processes, looks at work-play balance, looks at um, um, gameplay psychology, things like uh, uh, bidding in poker or outsmarting people or gamesmanship and sorts of things. So it's a psychological process. Uh, and those of you that are in, uh, struggling with time management, uh, the, uh, the work-play balance uh, um, information you will find incredibly useful. It's a very different class from this, but I think most of you will find it uh, fascinating and useful. It's a really cool class, and it begins pretty much one minute after this class ends. That's the way school uh, uh, runs here at Full Sail. We go, we go for four weeks straight, and then uh, as soon as that's done, the next class opens up. It's available to you online. You'll still have access to this class for about two weeks after this class closes on Sunday. So you can come back and, and uh, uh, fix anything or turn in late work or check your grades. Um, uh, there's one last thing we're asking you to do. It's called Portfolio Competency Self-Reflection. We want you to do that at the very end after you've finished everything. It's telling us what you think about how the class runs and it helps us to improve the class. So these are the activities this week. You're reading one chapter of Resonate. Uh, it's about feedback. You're looking at one of three student films, picking one, writing sh a short uh, two or three paragraph uh, write-up, offering feedback on that student project. This is a written project. Uh, again, that's due on Sunday night as well. And then you're upgrading, your, you're giving us the final version of your uh, um, brand yourself project and you are going to make sure that that is self-running and includes a changes list. So that's everything we're looking for. Um, I'll get this one more last chance. Oh, YouTube's still screwy. So, uh, do I have any questions here? Oh, sir. Uh, all right. So again, uh, if I have not given you feedback on your project yet, and the project this uh, the feedback this week is in the form of video feedback, so there'll be a short video that you can watch, and uh, I will talk you through whatever I have to say about your project. I've been very pleased with the projects I've seen, uh, and uh, if you haven't gotten yours yet, you will have it tomorrow. Uh, I'll make sure that you are, you have uh, uh, as much time as possible this week to work on the changes. Anybody that uh, finds themselves getting a little behind or needing some extra time, uh, all you need to do is, is get a hold of me, and I'll be around all week. So anybody who's working on uh, uh, any aspects of, of 
configuring audio, audio or, or getting audio and feed uh, present PowerPoint to work nicely together or uh, anything like that. I'll be available. Anybody that needs any help. Uh, and uh, um, I'm uh, uh, really pleased with how this class has gone. I think you guys are really sharp and I think you're going to be uh, pretty cool full sellers. I think most of you fit in. I, I, I got a sense that you guys really know the system and you fit and you, you're, you've got the right mindset to be successful students here. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thinking very highly of you guys and I'm hoping you have a really good career here at Full Sail. And uh, anybody that uh, needs anything from me, I'll be available all week. And uh, um, uh, just let me know what you need. And I hope you have a great career here at Full Sail as you move forward and, and uh, um, fulfill your lives. Good night, everybody.